Okay, so today we're gonna discuss, you know, another module in our microcontroller called the uh, uh, digital converter, WDC14. Okay, so so basically, uh, what we have taken so far, we are considering all the time by default that any input. So for example, if you configure some bin that is a GPIO input, that the signal that it, this bin will receive either high or low, right? Digital, zero or one. Uh, so what, what, will, what will really happen inside the microcontroller on, uh, to check that bin, it will check its voltage. For example, if it's higher than two volt, then it will be considered high. And if it's low than 0.8, it will be considered low or zero. Okay, so that's what's what's really happened. So basically what you receive is not, you know, absolute zero or absolute 3.3 volt. No, you will you will find, for example, today that it, for example, high is usually uh, 3.29. It's not 3.3 exactly. Uh, and maybe for some other modules that you have, it will be 3.2, you know, it's not be, it will not be precisely at 3.3. So there should be some mechanism inside the microcontroller to, to determine if this is high or low. Okay, so we have this threshold, the V input high threshold, which is two volt here, or the V input uh, V threshold low, uh, which is 0.8 here. Okay. But how about, for example, if you have uh, a module called accelerometer? We don't have this module in our microcontroller. Okay, but this is basically a sensor that. Uh, that senses or measures the acceleration. So if there is acceleration, which means increasing the speed per second per, uh, in time, so the, the, the speed is not constant, then this module will measure this acce acceleration for you. Okay? So let's assume that we have this sensor, although we don't have, but let's assume we have it. Okay? And this sensor, you know, uh, can convert the, uh, the, 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 acceler the acceleration G into some measured voltage, okay? Between zero and 3.3. .3. For example, let's assume that this guy, this, uh, this sensor has output voltage that is directly proportional to the acceleration G. For example, it's equal to 0.33 G. So for, for example, if G, the acceleration is one uh, meter uh, square per second, or one meter per second square, I'm sorry, okay? which is acceleration, which means we increase the speed by one uh, meter per second every one second. That, that, that's what, what it's mean. Then you will see an output voltage equal to 0.33 volt with that sensor. Since then you measure this voltage, you know it's 3.3, uh, then you know that the G is equal to one. If G is equal to two, then you will measure uh, 0.66. Then you can determine based on that voltage that the, the acceleration is 0.6. Is points is, is two. I'm sorry. Okay, and so on. So uh, if we draw this rela relation between VO and the G of the sensor, the measured the measured acceleration and the output voltage of this sensor, it will be something like this. Okay. Good. Uh, so if we just you know in, uh, take this as input. This module take it it's 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 out with view and put it in at some input bin in our microcontroller and measure it. We'll measure two stuff. For any uh, voltage less than 0.8, okay. Any voltage less than 0.8 will be considered zero. So, for example, if the acceleration was two, that's less than uh, 0.8, it's around 0.7 or something. 0.8 is around here around close to three. So you will measure G as zero. If uh, G is one, which uh, you know clearly less than 0.8, it's around 0.3 or something, you will also measure zero. And if the acceleration is higher than two, for example, three or four, all these measures will be, you know, uh, input to your microcontroller as 3.3 .3 volt or high volt. And for that, you will you will assume that uh, G is equal to how much? Three, I'm sorry, ten, the maximum. Okay. So of course, it's not that's not you know an accurate way to measure stuff. So we need something to 
to take this analog to tell the microcontroller, the, hey, stop here. That's not a digital input. That's an analog input. And we need to convert it to a digital number, you know, something like 001, you know, something like this. Before he considers uh, the such kind of, uh, you know, behavior, that is any, any, any voltage less than point, it will be zero. Any voltage higher than two will be uh, 3.3. .3. We need such a module, which is the analog to digital convert, okay? So basically, the analog to digital converter is, uh, or ADC in short, uh, it's a hardware device that measures uh, an analog input and convert it to, uh, or assign to it a digital value. Well, that's fine, or convert it to digital value, okay? So now, with this EDC, we will put this EDC, you know, just in front of this, uh, or activate the EDC in front of this bin that receives the O signal. And based on the input voltage, we will be, we will be seeing here a digital number, okay? So for example, we go forward, for example, if we measured, if the input were, were zero, was zero, then the, we will see output not zero, we'll see output equal to, for example, for eight bit, for eight bit resolution. I mean, this ADC will convert the input voltage analog that you have into an eight bit number, okay? So if the input is zero, which means the acceleration is zero, then you will, you will, uh, you will see this number, you know, eight zeros, which is of course zero. Uh, uh, if the input is 0 0.04, and remember, 0 0.04 means G equal to 0 0.04 over 3.3. If we go back to this relation here, okay, uh, any voltage that you, that you see, if you want to know the corresponding G, just divided by 0.33. So, uh, for, uh, for uh, the input or, you know, the output of the, of the analog input, is 0.04, that means that G was 0, uh, 0.04 over 0.33, okay, 0.33. So this basically will be converted to a digital number, which is uh, three, if we have eight bit resolution. And I will explain how, how we got this number, how we got this digital number, okay? Then based on that, we will read this, uh, this three, this number, we will read this digital number, okay? And we'll convert it back in our program, as we will see later, maybe after uh, half an hour or something, when I finish this presentation, we will see that we will take this digital number and convert it back to its original value, okay? To know what kind of G we have, what kind of acceleration we have, okay? And again, we put this ADC because we can't read directly 0.04. If we just read it directly, it will be transfer, uh, it will be trans, uh, translated as zero by our microcontrol, but we don't, we, we, we want to preserve its, its value, to convert it to some value, then we convert it back to its original shape in our program to know what was the acceleration. Another example, if the voltage is 1.65, this will be another, you know, uh, number, which is higher number now because it's a higher reading. So here it was only three because it's a low number. Now it's a higher number, so it become 128. And again, at the end, we we'll know how to convert this voltage into, uh, you know, digital number. Then after reading this, we'll make a conversion our program to 1.65 back, then G is equal to 1.65 over 0.33, okay? Another uh, example, 2.4, this will be another digital number, which is 1011110, okay? Uh, and finally, I'm sorry, I didn't change this. So let's, let's do it together now. At 3.3, .3, this is another digital number, which is uh, all of them are one. When you reach, you know, the maximum, the maximum range, or even beyond, I mean, if the sensor reads, Sensor is an analog, 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 analog device. It can read until it's VCC, until it's power input. So for example, if it reads, you know, uh, five, you know, some glitch or something, some noise, then it will also be translated to the highest, you know, highest number we have here because we have eight bits. So the highest number is eight ones, which is 255, okay? 
Inside this ADC, we have is a basic circuit. It's called uh, sample and hold circuit. Okay, so sample and hold are actually two circuits. We have is a sample here, which is the input part, and we have the hold part, which is you know the, we can consider it the analog, the I'm sorry, the output part. And by the way, the capacitor is is uh, uh, is a common between both between the sampling. Uh, Sampling circuit and the whole circuit. And basically, here uh, upon this, uh, upon this uh, resistance, we receive the analog input, the output of the sensor, for example. And then, based on some rate, there is a switch here that closes on or off, you know, opens and close upon some, some rate called the sampling rate. Okay. So, whenever the switch is closed, you know, Whenever the switch is closed, the input will charge the capacitance C. Okay, and we need not to open the, the switch uh, before the capacitor reaches, you know, the capacitor takes some time to charge. No, you know, so we need uh, to, to leave this switch closed until we sure that the capacitance, capacitance has reached the the input exactly, then we can open the cab we can open the we can open then the ah, the switch again. Okay. The whole the circuit. So it this means we take some sample from them. That that that's what's mean by sample sampling circuit. Then the whole the circuit is actually you know uh, a unity amplifier here, unity gain amplifier, the gain is one. And you know that the voltage is at the positive bar, uh, terminal is equal to the positive, uh, I'm sorry, the voltage at the negative terminal. So all the voltage or, you know, the voltage of the capacitor, which is V input, should be V input, will be equated here. So, and the, uh, and then this, this input will be go to another circuit, which I didn't draw here. Okay. That will make the conversion that will make, uh, that will take this V input analog and convert it to something like this, some, some bits. But I didn't draw this here, okay? The purpose of the hold circuit is to hold, just like this, to hold the, 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 the voltage at the input uh, uh, until the conversion completes, okay? Now, as I said here, we need, you know, some clock that will open and close the switch. And this is very, very important, or the sampling, okay? So the sampling rate is very important. Let's write this correctly. How much is your sampling rate is very important. So for example, here we have a sine wave. So assume that we have a sine wave as input, okay? And uh, here is, you know, the sampling rate. It's around, maybe one T, okay? So the sampling frequency here equal to the, uh, the, the signal frequency, okay? Or it's less than two of the signal frequency. So let's say so, two F. So F is a signal frequency, okay? Why two F I will explain in a moment after one slide, after this slide. So if we do that, then what, the, the samples that we will take will convert is actually this one and this one, you know, and the same as, so if you connect them together, you will get uh, a DC value, which is not of course sine wave. Now, if you make, you know, if you choose the sampling rate much higher than twice 2F or the, the, double, the uh, double the frequency of the signal, you will have approximately the same shape as you know the original original signal. So if you just connect them by hand, you will get a sine wave, right? Which is good. Now, now the accuracy is, is, is very good. But remember that all these samples will be converted to digital, and they need locations in memory to be uh, to be stored. So that's good. So if you choose uh, the sampling frequency less than two F double the, uh, the signal frequency, and I will explain why in a moment, why double, why exactly double. Uh, uh, then you will, uh, the, your sampling will be not accurate. I mean, the samples will not represent the actual signal, which is good, which is not good, which is not accurate. 
Also, and this is called the undersampling, and sometimes sometimes they call it aliasing. Uh, here, if you choose sampling frequency much higher than 2F, that's okay. You got a very good sampling. I mean, uh, you represent, you know, uh, accurately the original signal, but you will need a, a big memory. And this is called oversampling. So we need now to choose the good value for if else, okay? Such is that we don't have undersampling, which is bad in accuracy. And we don't have oversampling, which is accurate, but bad in, in memory. So what is this? Is actually to, you, to use what's, uh, what's called Nyquist, uh, Nyquist theorem. So this guy here proves that if you choose uh, the sampling frequency to be double the, the highest frequency of the signal, the signal might have you know, uh, many frequency components. If you guys studied signals and system, Systems, you know that you can uh, analyze any uh, signal into its, uh, you know, in its frequency content. And when you look at the frequency content, you will find that sometimes a, a signal have, uh, you know, uh, if maximum or if minimum, something like this. Okay. Uh, for for sine wave, sine wave only has one frequency, one 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 frequency content. It's, you know only one frequency, which is actual, it's actual frequency. So for example, for the sine wave, if you choose a sampling rate to be equal to 2F, then you will represent, this is, this is very sufficient to represent uh, the sine wave, okay? Here is an example in which we, we choose the sampling to be 4F max, okay? Which is also good. Uh, basically, don't choose the sampling frequency to be exactly equal to uh, doubling or double the or two f f maximum of the of the signal, but it choose it a little bit higher, you know, just to be because some many of the times we don't know any, exactly what what is the maximum frequency of the signal that we are uh, sampling or what or the signal that we are converting to digital. So just to choose it, you know, slightly higher than two f max. Okay, now there are three uh, basic uh, definitions that we need, we need to know regarding any uh, ADC converter, which is the range, the resolution, and the precision. So the range is basically what is the input, free, what is the input voltage range, okay? And in our case, in our microcontroller, you, the ADCs in our microcontroller can convert up to 2.5 volt. It can, I'm sorry, uh, it can accept up to 2.5 volt. How about if, if the input is more than 2.5 volt, we will make a kind of transformation that we will see in a moment in our program, okay? But basically the maximum is 2.5 volt. The resolution is, the uh, can be determined based on that you know based on that equation which is which is the smallest change to be converted which is v maximum for example here 2.5 minus v minimum which is zero over uh, or divided by two to the power n and n is the number of bits to represent the digital output and here we have four levels so we have two bits minus one if you apply this you will find that the resolution is 0.833, which basically the distance between two levels. So this is level zero. This is level 0.833. This is level, level two multiplied by uh, 0.833, which is 166. Then this is, uh, you know, uh, three multiplied by this number, which is, you know, 2.5, which is the maximum, okay? And since you have four levels, Basically, you need two bits. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Now, what's gonna happen if we receive a voltage that is, for example, point to four, something between point eight and zero? This will be converted into zero, or it will convert it to zero, zero. What happens if I receive point eight, just slightly below this guy? Again, it will be converted to zero, zero. What if I receive point eight, three, three? Then this guy will be converted to zero, one. What if I receive one volt, which is be, uh, below 1.66 and above 0.833? This will be converted again to zero 0.1, okay? 
Uh, what if I receive three, which is above 2.5? This will be this will be one one. Okay. What if I receive minus one volt? Then this will be converted to zero zero. Okay. This is how the you know the the conversion works. That's why the resolution is very important because as you see here, guys. The minimum voltage that we can sense is 0.8, which is big compared to 2.5, the maximum range. So the error is big as well. Okay. The, the more levels you have, you know, the more accurate you are. This is another example here. Same, same, same range, 2.5, but now we have three bits or eight levels. So these are eight. Now, as you see, guys, the resolution has reduced. I'm sorry, the resolution is increased. So the terminal resolution is a bit a little bit confusing. Okay, as a number it's reduced, but the sense itself, you know, it's 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 enhanced, or you know, because now we can represent more or uh, or more accurate the signals that's come. There will be smaller. Okay. So now uh, if it is uh, below zero, if it, if it's below if actually if it's if it was below. 0.357 it will be converted to 00, zero. if it's between the input signal between 0.357 and 714 0.714 it will be converted to 001 and so on okay so what is the trade off here the trade off between using lower number of bits and higher number of bits of course with lower number of bits we have lower accuracy but it's memory efficient because you only need two bits and uh, it's only four levels, for example. Here, of course, you have higher, higher accuracy, but you have two disadvantages. The first one, it needs more conversion time. Okay, so if you have higher number of bits, usually you have the circuit, this circuit, assembly and hold and, you know, the assembly and hold and also the second part, which I didn't show here, needs more time to convert to the signal. Okay. And of course, it's, it's memory inefficient because you are using now, you know, a higher number of bits, higher levels as well. Here is some, you know, numbers about the conversion cycles. Again, if you choose higher uh, bits, higher number of bits, to represent your uh, digital input signal, analog input signal, you will have higher conversion time. So uh, as a default, our ADC converter default is 14 bits. And for 14 bits, we need 16 cycles to convert any, any sampled input. If you, if you set it to 12, you will need 14 less and so on, okay? So basically you can configure, uh, we can configure our EDC with four different number of bits, either eight or 12, 10, 12, 14. Okay, we're, we're gonna see today just the 14. We don't need actually, use always 14, okay? It's not a big problem in our microcontroller. Okay. Now, how many boards, how many bins in our microcontrollers that can receive analog input? and to convert them to digital. Okay, as you see here, uh, out of eight, we have eight boards, no, I'm sorry, 10 boards. Out of these 10 boards, we have one, two, three, four, uh, we have five boards that has uh, analog to digital conversion modules, five modules, okay? So for example here, uh, this is board six. So you can use board, bin 6.1 and bin 6.0 okay as analog as analog inputs to convert you know analog uh, signal to digital and as you see each bin that you can use had its own name a whatever a for example a14 a15 here is uh, 818 819 820 a21 you know so any bit has its own A is 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 for A to A, A, ADC, you know, electro digital conver converter. Okay. Uh, you have here board four, you know, all the bins can be used. And you have board uh, five, 
most of them can be used from A0 until A5. Today, we're going to use A0, which is been 5.5. And basically, if you count them all, they are 28 bins. And that means we can convert to 28 analog signals at the same time. Okay. But of course, when you use uh, a bin as an EDC, you must configure its functionality as an EDC, just like you are and other stuff that we saw. Because the default is uh, G by O. Here are the registers. We will not go into details because they are, again, they are complex, like is like the UART. But basically, you have two control registers, okay, uh, in which you can set the you know uh, the clock of that module, the sampling rate. Number of bits to be sampled, 14, 12, you know, uh, 10 or eight, like what we saw before. Also the enable, enable this module, and also to start the conversion, to trigger the module to start conversion. Uh, since we convert and we should, we should have some kind of memory to store the, the output uh, binary, uh, and so that will be, yeah, that will be digital. So when you receive a sig uh, input signal, I'm like input signal, you convert it. Okay. So these samples that's converted need some memory. So you have here uh, 32 memory registers. You can use any of them for your conversion. Okay. I'm going to use MEM0 today. MEM0, ADC14, MEM0. But you can use whatever you want. Uh, we have here some, you know, uh, many registers for for uh, to enable the interrupt and also to check the flag of the interrupt. Also today we're gonna see how the interrupt work with ADC. And here is the configuration steps. Again, like like you are, for example, you need to configure the, the uh, you know the modules that you're gonna use. So for example, here, as I said, we need we will use. We will send the signal, analog signal, to bin 5.5, this signal here, this bin here, which is A0. So we need to configure the functionality of this bin as a GBIO. If you look at the uh, data sheet of, uh, of our microcontroller, you'll find that to set its functionality, bin 5.5, as a GBIO, this is actually the tertiary function. So you have, remember, GBIO then primary, then secondary, then tertiary. Tertiary is one one. If you remember guys, there is two registers called BX cell zero and BX cell one. When we configure, when we configure this two registers, the zero zero, then this is GBIO. Zero one, this is a primary. One zero, this is, this is secondary. One one, this is tertiary. Okay. So here, you will configure this bin as tertiary. So this is step one. Step two, I didn't show here because we will not touch it, but basically you can do it. So step two basically is to configure the number of bits, but we will keep the default, which is 14, okay? So to step three is, uh, is to configure the, the clock, to choose the clock, which clock you wanna use. For example, the master clock here. And since, as I said, uh, uh, higher sampling, okay, usually needs, you know, uh, more time for conversion, okay? So you have here two dividers, not only one divider. So if you wanna use, if you didn't, if you, if you figure out that you have some inaccuracy or error, high error in your conversion, okay? Then you can, you know, reduce your uh, your uh, clock ADC clock so that you know you have more time for conversion and you have you know better better uh, better uh, better what <laughs> better better accuracy. Okay. Remember that the the remember here in the sampling and old circuit. So when you close a switch. The, the capacitor will charge and it should reach the input. For example, if the input is 1.5 volt, this guy should reach a voltage equal to 
but if you open the switch before that, you may reach here 1.3. So the, the conversion will be wrong. You will convert to a digital value that is corresponding to 1.3, not 1.5. That's why you need at that, in that in that situation, you need to make uh, this switch to be closed for a longer longer time. Okay. The third step, uh, fourth step, I'm sorry, is to convert uh, is to choose the, the memory that you're gonna use. Okay. So you, as I said, we have 32 me memory registers. I'm gonna use here ADC uh, MIMSU. Another uh, is the same is the same step, same 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 function. Uh, what is called repeat mode. Okay, basically you can make the conversion automatic. So whenever the ADC module uh, samples one signal and convert it, and after it finishes the conversion, it can go back to the signal to the input bin and read another sample and so on automatically. Uh, if it's manual, then you configure here false, which means don't repeat. The user here must, you know, trigger the conversion by himself. And we will see both examples. Uh, step number five is actually many configurations. Four, I think, yeah, four of them. Okay. Again, the conversion, I don't know why you should do that twice, but here it is. Okay, the conversion is, a, is, a, is a, also choose ADC memory, which should be uh, again same as this, this guy. Okay, then you choose the voltage range. So you don't you don't have you don't have the freedom here to choose any range. No, you have only four ranges: two point five, I think two, uh, I think one point five. It's it's written in the in the data, data sheet. So there are only four of them. Okay. So basically, most since we are we have here three point three volt, you know the high voltage or high voltage. So in our applications, I mean, the two applications that we we'll study that we will study in this lecture and tomorrow, the higher voltage is three point three. So we're gonna keep the maximum. The maximum is two point five, which is ADC. You know this 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 macro here is corresponding to two point five. Okay. Then you choose here the channel. So what is the channel here is on bin 5.5. So let's go back here to, to the this plot. So bin 5.5 is corresponding to A0. A0 means the channel zero, a channel ADC zero. Okay, so you should write here uh, ADC input A0, which is B5.5. Uh, differential mode or not, this is the last configuration look we don't we will not touch that but basically uh, if you, you can you know have two inputs okay and measure the voltage difference the analog voltage difference between them so you have two analog signals input one is five volt the other is three volt okay you can read them independently this will be a digital number this will be a digital number then you can you can for example subtract right you can also subtract the analog voltages themselves. So five minus three is two. So then you convert it to, okay? So this is what's called the differential mode. But of course, we will not touch that. We have only, you know, single input and that's it. So we're gonna mark this as false. The step six, uh, yeah, is to sample uh, the timer, ADC manual iteration. So here is, you know, uh, repeat or not. So here is ADC manual. You can put here manual or automatic. Manual you, means uh, you have to trigger the conversion yourself as a programmer. Okay. It, uh, automatic means whenever the ADC finishes, it will, you know, go back and take another sample by itself. You don't need to intervene in this. You need to enable the module. This is how to enable the module. And you need also to trigger the conversion or start the conversion. This means, this, this function means, please start to converting. Whenever you write this and execute it, then the ADC will read, uh, will sample a value or read a value and convert it to a digital. Okay. This, the last here, this is not actually steps, but you know, you can consider it as a, as a step also, which, which enables that, but 
I mean, you don't have to enable the interrupt. That's what's what I mean. Why it's they are not the steps. Okay. So here is how you enable the interrupt. You enable the interrupt first inside uh, the interrupt in the module itself. The ADC module. You should enable the interrupt inside the module, and again you should enable the interrupt in the envic. You know this module that is responsible for all the uh, hardware interrupts in your microcontroller. You also, you also should enable the interrupt of ADC inside this module. Okay. And here is what I'm saying here. Why is, there, is, there is no step two because step two is actually to change the number of bits output output bits, fourteen, twelve, you know, ten or eight. We're gonna use fourteen, so it didn't put put it. Here is uh, our application today. It's again from uh, a TI website. They have some, you know, ready to use applications. Okay. So we have here analog input on, on, on ADC0, which has been 5.5. .5. Then we will read this value. Okay. Uh, this input actually, you know, is, is zero or 3.3. .3. So I will show you guys that, you know, there is some bin here that it's, uh, if you, uh, that, that can give you 3.3 volts. So I just connect this bin to bin 5.5 .5 if I want to put 3.3 .3 input, which is high, or just remove it to make it low, zero, okay? So if the input is high, then the lid will, will turn on. If the input is low, the lid will not, will you know, will, will turn off, okay? <clears throat> Let's go to the mains and we go back to these two variables. So basically first I, I'm configuring LED one uh, as a GPIO, you know, you know this of course. Okay, I will go back to this later. Yeah, here is also some, uh, some uh, these four lines, okay. Since this analog input might be a, a floating number or in double number, something like 1.6 or 1.5, Five, five, something like this. Then it's better to use what's called FBU, floating point unit inside your microcontroller. Okay, and to enable this, you write these two numbers. I don't know what is this actually, basically, but basically, I think this EDC memory is part of from it's part of another big memory, and you should also enable that memory so that you can convert into uh, you can use it. Okay. But basically, you just copy and paste these, these lines. Okay, you don't mess with them. Here you choose your uh, your frequency. Okay, uh, you can just commit the first line if you don't like. That's fine. And here is basically the second. So I just get this from uh, from TI uh, website. But you know, they have some <laughs> uh, some redundancy here. But I just you know. Used this uh, or you committed this line and it was okay, and it was okay. I think here you are configuring, you know, power state or something. So just keep it at, at the default. Here you are configuring the frequency to forty-eight megahertz. Okay. Uh, uh, enabling the module. Oh, step in step one. Uh, Step one, we, uh, as I said, you know, we 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 choose the tertiary uh, function to bin five point five. Uh, the is a clock source, you know. Uh, choosing the memory and the repeat mode, and uh, the conversion memory and the voltage reference and the channel, and differential mode is false. Uh, here is, uh, if it's manual or automatic, I, I, I make it manual here, but in, the, in our coding, we'll make it manual once and then we then make it automatic. Then enable the module and the trigger the conversion. Okay. And here is uh, the, what, the, you know, the interrupt stuff. Then here is the interrupt surface routine. So this interrupt surface routine will be executed only whenever uh, there was a conversion and this conversion completes. Okay. Whenever you have a completed conversion, you will find yourself inside this interrupt service routine. Okay. Here is the step in which we convert from, remember, 
this number here, this macro is corresponding to 2.5 volt. Our input at point, been 5.5 will be either 3.3 or zero. So we must make some translation, okay? And here is the translation. Whatever the value, so C current EDC result is the output digital, digital form of the input analog, okay? You take this result and multiply it by 3.3 .3 and divide by two to the power uh, 14. This is should, should be two, two to the power 14 or two to the power 14 minus one. I, I'm not sure exactly. But here is how to make the, the translation, okay? If you need more information about this, I can explain how, what, what's meant by translation, okay? Then, if the input is, is higher than V high, you remember guys, uh, in the first slide, this microcontroller considers any voltage higher than two as high, less than 0.8 is low, okay? Then you light on the LED, you know, or, you know, light off the LED. And since we are on the manual mode, we must make, if you want more conversions, uh, then you need to trigger the conversion again, okay? If you choose here automatic iteration, then you don't need that line, okay? Good. Any questions? Okay, so let's now see the program. Uh, this guy. And it's manual here. So let's... Uh... So, first of all, I will show you something here, very important. So, you guys have these uh, clips or whatever, the wires, you know? So just to bring two of these, I will show you. You need a jumper, okay? And the two of these, okay? This wire has, you know, two, two terminals one uh, female and one male, okay? So you need two of these, two of these male-female wires, okay? And you, you, you need a jumper and you have a jumper because remember there was a five volt jumper that we removed in our first, you know, usage of this kit. So bring back this jumper and add the, add the male uh, bins or terminals you just connect them to each other. Then you have a wire which is female, female, because you don't have this. Okay, then, uh, as you, uh, if you remember, I want to connect bin 5.5 to either zero or 3.3. .3. So you have in your kit, I will show you, you have in your kit this, this three, uh, on the side. I'm not sure if you can see. You guys can see those. So there is, you know, three wire, three uh, female, uh, male wires here, connections. Two of them are ground and the third is 3.3. .3. So you put one of those in the 3.3, .3, like this. And then bin 5.5 .5 is, uh, uh, the right column, if you make the bumper in the front, it will be on the right column. You know, I'm not sure if you can see, it's, it's this one. So if you put the second terminal here at 0.5, then you are connecting 5.5. .5. If you remove it by default, the input will be zero or low. Okay, so let's first put it, then we run the experiment and you see we should read 3.3, .3. let's see. So let me run this guy. Uh, oh, it's not connected, so.
good now click we go to the inside because you know i i triggered the conversion here in that line so it makes a conversion and go here to the interrupt service routine let's check the value at that guy so this is actually the digital number okay 16 you know 375 it's a digital value okay like zero zero but it's a decimal and here is the binary of it you see guys the binary this is this is a conversion of 3.3 .3. then uh Uh, but this is remember with 2.5 as maximum okay so this value here is corresponding to any voltage higher than 2.5 remember this then we meet we need to make the com the normalization or translation so we take this value which is 16 whatever and multiply it by 3.3 .3 and divide by 16 3 uh, 8 4 this you give this will give us you know something very close to 3.3 .3. Look, 3.29, okay? And of course, this is higher than uh, two, so I light the LED. I turn, on, I turn it the LED on. And here is, you know, I stopped here. Now, if I if I click run, it will make another conversion. And again, since I didn't I didn't push away the, uh, the wire, so it's still uh, 16.371. Which when we translated to 3.6, it will be 3.29 volt. And it's still. Now I will remove the wire. So I will. And the input will be zero by default. I removed the wire now. Now let's make a conversion. Let's check this guy. You know, 1000, whatever. It's a very. Now the sample and the hold uh, capacitor will discharge. Okay, so it will take time. So the voltage is 0.2, it's not zero. But if I make, make another, because it's still the, the capacitor needs time to discharge, that's it. That's why we didn't see zero. But if I make another conversion, look now, 400, and that guy, it was 1000. And that guy is 0 0.08, okay? Uh, I think maybe it will go m m much less if I, if, I, if I run for the third time. Yeah, 285, and the voltage is, Point zero. I think it will go to point zero four. Let's let's check. Two sixty six reduced the reduced also. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you see you see the idea. Okay. So it doesn't go to zero directly when you uh, because the the whole the capacitor this is a charging capacitor in the sample and all circuit takes time to discharge. Okay. So that's you know. Uh, the the program it's really you know simple although it's really difficult to make it work <laughs> uh anyways so the assignment your assignment guys okay will be to show that number on a bluetooth uh, i'm sorry on uh, on i'm sorry on a serial board on a serial uh, on a serial what serial serial window this serial you know so whenever you read it here, okay, you don't read the read anymore. You will add some 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 lines here of code to take this number, divide it into its digit digits, and convert or or send it to the UR so you can see it on your screen. Okay, that's a kind of magic. <laughs> it's really easy. Don't don't be afraid of it. Okay, so let's uh, please do this. Then we're gonna think about the the homework together. Okay. Let me. Uh, I will send you the, the the slides right now. Okay, and you have also.
I sent the slides to you guys, okay? something in the in the code you forgot something okay I'll, I'll go look into it right now hi professor can i share my screen yes uh, all right so I'm going to do the first run. So for my normalize, I got 3.29. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to unplug one of it and then run again. And then I got a 0 0.1. Right. Thank you. Cool. And then work on the homework, right? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Abdrim, I can share my screen for you. Yes, Christian. All right, uh, here we go. All right, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so when I run it first time, we read uh, 3.299. Mm -hmm. And when I unplug um, P5.5, if you run it again, uh, we should read about good point good. so yeah Professor, can you get my check? Yes, Clark. Hey, Professor, sorry to interrupt, but uh, what was what were you supposed to do for the homework? Yeah, you should. So <laughs> the numbers that you are getting right now, and we just hover over this uh, variable and see it on the debugger. Yeah. Okay. You should reflect it onto the screen using UART. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. You see it, Professor? Yes, Clark. Yeah, yeah, I can see. I marked you, man. <laughs> uh, professor, can I show mine? Yeah. I sound good, Professor. Can work on. Yes, that. I'm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I marked you from the in the beginning. 
Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to check. I, I didn't see it as graded, so I thought you wanted to see it again. No, no, thank you very much. Um, so if I run it, it's okay. 3.29, 3 then I'm going to go unplug it right now. Wait, did it stay the same? Oh, 0 0.24. Okay. Uh, Professor Mines is ready if you can take a look at it. Yeah, of course. Here. Yeah. Okay. Is it can you see it right now? Yeah. Okay, so I have 3.29 right here is my value. Okay. After I disconnect it, press continue. Over uh, point okay. one eight. Thank you. Professor, can you see my screen? Yes, we'll see. Oh, it was sweet. We get okay. 3.29. We unplug the P5.5. Zero point okay. two two. Professor Saul. Christopher. Yeah, it's Christopher. Okay. So when I run the code. It gets it as this one. And then when okay. I, when I disconnect it, it gets it as 0 0.1. Good. So, will you have any issues?
So guys, whenever you need help, just call me. I will put this, okay? I will go out for some minutes and come back, okay? If you need any help, I will be with you. Okay. Okay. Mm, yes. You guys can see my uh, uh, monitor, the serial board monitor. Okay. Yes. So basically, this is the reading. This is this value. Is the reading of the uh, to digital convert. This is you know the converted stuff. You guys were having 2.9 something and uh, something around 0 0.04 or something, okay? When it's zero. So this is basically the reading when it's zero, okay? So what what kind of, uh, to look at this this value, we're going to the, you know, who, uh, using the mouse and just go over this uh, variable called uh, normalized ADC result. Okay, and we can see that in the debugger. Okay, but now we're gonna see it, you know, without without any debugging or stuff. Uh, so automatically, what's 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 converted will go to the screen to go to the serial over the UART. Okay, so here is uh, this is our you know different runs. I'm just clicking on the green arrow. Okay, now if I put if I connect B5.5 to 3.3, we should read one now. I'm sorry, or 3, 3 volt. 3.299, 3.98, and so on. Okay, this is what I what I want to see. A message that shows to you this is okay. This is the output of the ADC.
Sure. Yes, Clark. Uh, would you would it be possible to look at my code and see what I'm doing wrong? I'm not sure if this is okay. Correct. Let me see. So you see it? No. I'm not sure if I'm using the Spurnf, and then I'm I'm sending it, sending the data, but I'm not getting anything on my serial port monitor. Go down a little bit. Uh, oh, that's it. I'm not sure if yeah. this is what you were asking for. Because I'm sending it one by one. I have the uh, 
I have the char value here, which is four. 